just having a hug and session with my boy. He likes to be hugged. Maybe he really like it. He really leans into being hugged, you guys. I'm not joking. This boy is the biggest baby. Come here, do you do? I love you too. Come on. Come on, you can have more than nothing too. Come on. Oh no, here come everybody. Oh no, here come everybody. Come on, Dido. Oh, Dido, her need a loving. Oh, her need loving in the morning. Her gonna get, oh my God, the dirt the pee pot. He need the pee pot. Everybody needs. Oh, watch out, Dido, you're gonna get too much. You're gonna get too much. Her like a real hard head rubbing. Her like a hard head rubbing. People, watch out. And then they fight like children. And then they fight like children. Oh, touch my goose. And then you can do it. And then you can do it. Oh, oh, and then you He's having, oh, people, don't scratch my face. Don't scratch my face. Ma'am, I'll put you on camera and I'll show everybody how mean you are and you put the right hooks to my face. And bust my lip. You busted my lip more than any other dog I've ever had. Yeah, yeah, don't do it. Winston's having really bad skin problems. Like really bad. See it? That's why I switched him over. I'm trying to make him beef right now. He on carnivore diet because he got skin problems. How about he got skin problems? I guess my hug fest is over. I was getting hugs, and then I said too many nice things, and then all the other dogs came over here and they ripped it. Now it's ranked. Winky, come give your mom a hug. Don't let her ruin it. She's gonna ruin it. Come and get her. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's fat. You fat, you big, and you fat, and you fat, and you big. And you big, and you fat. My hair's all messed up this morning. I took Lelou with me <laughs> to take the kids to school. And the kids said that me and Lelou look just like each other. <laughs> Are they sweet? Oh my god, it's my Lelou. This is my boy. This is my boy. What a mama's boy, huh? You wait a mama's boy. You mama's boy. Oh my god. Oh. Be there. Do you there? Do you there? Come on. Do you there? Come on. Oh. Yeah. We know you do. We know you do, you fat fatty. Uh. We're. Good morning. What? 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 I can't say. I go so long without talking. There, when I say something, they're like, "Who's in the house?" What's up, dirty plant hoes and all you dirty plant enthusiasts out there? It is too late in the morning to be getting started on doing chores, but Vlogmas is getting me behind like a mofo. So, like my plan of action. Because it takes my old ass too long to edit. Let's just be real. And I know you guys are like, what are you doing, Rachel? Like the editing, it's not some Michael Bay type shit. I'll tell you why. It's just like there's like dead footage you gotta cut out. And then it's just a whole deal. You know what I mean? Like it takes longer than what you would expect. Anyways, it's got me all jacked up. The house is trizash. I didn't clean up from dinner last night cause like my, my ear was like, had me not feeling the best. So, we have got a lot of freaking housework to catch up on, and this may be another, like, domestic diva number two type video. I'm not going to make you guys just watch me do, like, um, housework without talking to you. So, if I do speed it up, I will have voiceovers on all the sped up parts so that we can chat with each other or whatever. I'm not just going to have you listen to music and watch me because if you wanted to listen to music... You go listen to music. So that's like my, that's my strong opinion for this morning. And my plan of action is it's Wednesday. 
December the 7th. If Casey goes, oh my God, ow. If Casey goes live with me tonight, then I will use this vlog footage from today, save it, and then edit it tonight also, and then have a, a, a ready to upload for the next day. Maybe that's how it goes. Like y'all, I've never done this before. And like the scheduling of it all is like really hard for me. So I'm trying though. So this morning we're gonna do a lot of kitchen cleanup. I've got tons of dishes to do. And then we're going, I mean, we're just gonna clean. We're gonna clean girls, we gotta do it. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise it's just gonna all fall into a massive amount of disarray. And I don't have like good habits established. Um, I've got mommy issues and that's why I don't clean directly after I make dinner. It's like almost like a defiant type of thing. <laughs> but I always clean it up eventually. It's usually just the next morning when everybody's gone and everything. So that's just the way, that's the dirty, 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 ugly ass truth about it. And I know there's lots of people on YouTube who are immaculately clean and their houses are I mean, it's just really important for them for their house to be like immaculately clean all the time. And I'm realizing the older I get, that's just not, my house isn't gross, but my house isn't like immaculately clean either. And that's just kind of who I am. I'm almost 40 and that's just what's up. And also on a list of things that I would like to amend about myself that I don't like about myself, it doesn't even really make the list. I think I have shame issues with it because I was taught to be ashamed growing up of things that weren't perfect. I don't think that there's any need to feel ashamed. I think that um, probably 50% of like all humans uh, probably are not immaculately clean. And people pretending like they're immaculately clean online gets really old and also super intimidating. I think it gatekeeps a lot of people from putting their lives online because they think, well, I can't put my life online because I'm not as clean as Susie and everything's not white. And it's just, it's intimidating and people will make fun of you and they'll say things and they'll be ugly or rude about it. But it's all good because it's just life, y'all. We're just living life. And I'm kind of tired of like trying to make sure everything's, and you guys probably have looked at my videos in the past and been like, are you really trying to make things look perfect? And I promise you, yeah, like I try really hard to make everything look nice before I film. If I do, if I've done plant chores in the past, like I would take the whole day before like cleaning uh, window seals. I mean, like seriously, like just to make sure that everything was like extra, extra clean. And I'm just over it, you guys. I'm too old. So let's get to it, bitches. We got a lot of housework to do. Also, um, for my birthday, I got an espresso machine and it took me a really long time to learn how to use it. My favorite drink from Starbucks is the shaken espresso, no classic syrup, two pumps of sugar-free vanilla, and six Splenda. That's my Starbucks drink. It's my favorite. Uh, almond milk. Only almond milk because it has lower calories, but I'll drink like um, no fat milk or like I'll drink full milk. I don't care anymore. I'm getting weird about the calorie counting thing. I was on it really hard, but now I'm like, I'll make that a whole nother video. We'll talk about diet and stuff. And my baby made this in school. So pretty. I need to get a frame for it. I actually think that I have a gold frame, but God forbid I frame one kid's stuff and not another's. Holy shit. They'll set me ablaze. I also am missing a pinky nail. So um, I needed to go ahead and get a new set started for the Christmas party that's coming up this weekend. And I'm thinking about doing a fully bejazzled set. Okay, you guys. So it'd be nice to just do like two nails at a time. And that's what I've been doing anyways, but that might be in the vlog today, repairing this nail and um, starting my Christmas set. You see how ADD, this is gonna be a good representation of how it's hard for me to clean because I can't stick to one task at a time. Use this as a case study in your psychology class. 
Okay, so you're probably wondering what the weird clickbaity title is about. And I figured that while we took a break from like plant updates and stuff and did a little house cleaning today, I would tell you a really horrifying story that happened to me when I was a teenager. So when I was a teenager, um, I was a naughty, naughty girl and I had interactions with uh, my boyfriend. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that at the time these interactions weren't like full on sexual. You know what I mean? Like I think that they were close, but they weren't full on. But at the time, I was so like ignorant to things that I wasn't like sure what could get you pregnant and what couldn't get you pregnant. We're talking like just like when you're starting to enter the, the that whole world, right? And so. We were like writing notes back and forth to each other in school. We'll call we'll call this person Darren, okay? We were writing notes back and back and forth. This was high school by the way, not like junior high or something, okay? I'm not I'm not an animal. <laughs> Anyways, um we're writing notes back and forth to each other and I'm like pretty uneducated, so I'm thinking like maybe you know, my period's late, you know, and it's just like whenever you start, like even just experimenting with like sexual type stuff and, you know, you just get scared when you're a girl, you think everything's going to get you pregnant. And I was one of those idiots. So I wrote him a note, like being worried, like that maybe I was going to miss my period or something like that. And lo and behold, my mother did the laundry and found the note. And, um, we did not have a good relationship. We still don't have a good relationship, but I mean, that was like nuclear type of revelation. And I wasn't like, I think I was like 17 at the time. I wasn't super young, but I was still pretty young. And, um, so what she decided to do was she called Darren's mom and dad and told them about the note that she had found in my pocket and then invited them over so that we could all discuss it together. Like not just, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody. So like his mom and dad, my mom and stepdad at the time, and me and Darren all in the same room discussing like what this note said. And it was like one of the most completely mortifying moments of my entire life. Like I remember my heart was just completely beating out of my chest. Like I couldn't understand why it had to be that way. Like, why did his parents like have to come over? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like why did that have to be the solution? But that was the uh, one in a long line of many, many, many issues that uh, Darren and I, we'll call him Darren, in my teenage years had. Um, there was another time, y'all, I have so many traumatic stories that I can tell you in so many departments of my life, but I just wanted to share this one with you today because I was watching something on the internet and it just made me have this crazy flashback to me sitting in the living room with my mom and my stepdad and like looking across the living room at my boyfriend at the time and his mom and dad and they were literally like, my mom stood up and she was like reading my note out loud in a really sarcastic and like dark manner. It was super embarrassing. Like, to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure that Darren's mom and dad apologized later to me because they weren't 100% sure. I think what they were walking into when they came over there and they could kind of tell that it was like pretty devastating to me, super embarrassing, you know. Uh, no, we shouldn't have been doing stuff like that as teenagers, but I just remember it being like a really like a weird turning point, you know, where like I lost a lot of trust and stuff like that. And I don't know, you know how you get weird? Like, um, I have, like I said, I have so many like crazy high school memories from this period of time. Like there's actually a whole nother incident that went on like the next year, I think, where I actually got caught in the act, okay, of doing the actual deed <laughs> in my parents' house, okay, in high school. And that's a whole nother story, okay, because this, this story also was very traumatizing, but this was before I, 
I remember specifically being like, I was so regretful of the time that it had actually like escalated to that point because I knew from talking to like girlfriends and stuff that that what it what we had done was like not ever going to result in some like a pregnancy or something like that. So there was really no need to be concerned or scared or write the note in the first place. And 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 it didn't even get to uh, my boyfriend at the time. Like it was in my pocket. Like I never even gave it to him. So I don't know. It was just like this crazy. I've blocked a lot of it out. I don't remember what a lot of the conversation was, but I just remember like being so mortified and looking across the room at uh, Darren's parents and Darren's parents looking at me in like a way that was like saying to me almost like, oh my God, like I'm so sorry that we're here and like this is happening and I, we don't want to be here and no one wants to be here and you know. I remember getting like punished really severely for things that would happen between me and him. And then his parents would be like, you know, uh, nothing would happen. <laughs> so, you know, it would be like a crazy, crazy ordeal. But, um, yeah, me and like both, like my mom, my bio father and my ex stepdad, none of us, uh, we're all estranged. Like I don't have any kind of like family relationship like that. The only relationship I have currently is with my Nana, which is why we're so close. Um, but it's just like, I thought I just wanted to share that story with you today and let you know that that, that crazy thing happened. Like my mom found a note in my pocket and then called my boyfriend's parents. And then we all had to talk about what was in the notes. So yeah, I was just having that flashback today. I was watching something online. I don't even know what I was watching, but I just completely had that flashback of just being like, probably it was like an anxiety or spike. And I thought back to, Oh my God, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I guess my mom had told me a bunch because she had a teenage pregnancy it, with me and I'm an only child, which, you know, surprise, surprise for a lot of you. But, um, uh, she would tell me a lot when I was growing up that if I ever felt like I was going to be, uh, like a, like sexually active, that, all I had to do was come to her and like, we would talk about it. And she, you know, she would help me to like get on birth control and stuff. Like I genuinely believed it. You guys, she had me really believe in that if I came to her and was like, okay, I'm with a guy and you know, I'm thinking that it might be going in that direction and I want to get on birth control. She like really had me believe in that. So believe it or not, like even after this whole debacle where I felt completely betrayed, which now, now that I'm a parent, like, I don't even know what I would have done, to be honest with you. I, I think I would have handled things like a lot more different because of how, because of what I've been through. But I don't know if I hadn't been through what I've been through, if I would have handled it differently. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, I just know that I really wish if, when she would have found that note that she would have like had a heart to heart with me and like did what she said it, she was going to do. And like, you know, got, took me to a gynecologist and took me to a clinic and like got me on some birth control so that nothing bad happened and, or something, nothing unplanned happened. You know what I mean? That's what I wish would have happened. But like this totally explosive thing happened and it was just, you know, no parents are perfect. Like I said, we're, we are estranged or whatever, but I, you know, I don't hold grudges about like every single thing, but they're just, I'm just telling you guys this crazy ass story. Cause that's exactly what happened. She 100% picked up the phone, called his parents. They 100% came over. And then like, I had to face them after that. Cause we didn't break up after that, you know? So like I had to continue seeing their faces and being like, Hey, what's up? You know, uh, <laughs> It's just like horrifying experience and I don't know. I guess at the time when I was a teenager, I didn't feel like anybody else's parent would, te would treat the situation like that. But now that I'm adult, I could see, I could see peers of mine uh, treating a situation like that. For sure. That's my um, washing machine sending me a message telling me that my load is done. And y'all, the laundry has been like a real mountain issue here lately. Anyways, if you like Christmas, crazy, teenage, traumatic <laughs> stories, please leave a like, 
down below under this video. I really hope that you guys are enjoying Vlogmas. If you have any um, similar experiences that happened in your teenage dumb, or if you know if you heard like that your friend had any kind of experiences like that, or you know whatever, I may do. I'm thinking about doing a daddy issues repot with me. And just kind of like start unloading and just being like, hey guys, I've got daddy issues and here's where it started. <laughs> and then we'll do a mommy issues repot. We can just talk about all the shit because, you know, you guys already know about my reproductive health. Why the hell not? Why, why not, guys? Let's do it. Let's air out all the dirty laundry. Like I said, we're all estranged at this point. And do I think that like my mom watches my YouTube channel? I don't think so. No, I think she's far too narcissistic for that behavior, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. So I've got two other crazy stories that I could tell you guys next time where we have to like take a pause in Vlogmas and actually do some housework together. So here's the other crazy stories and you guys can vote down below for what you want. Leave it in the comment section. You can either hear the story time about how I had the whole police department looking for me when I was a teenager. Um, I think I've told that one on the podcast, but it was a long time ago. So it may be something that needs to be retold. And then I can also tell you about this, the time where my parents sent me to a girl's home and they went to Six Flags. So whichever story you guys want to hear, let me know. And I will catch you next time for the next episode of Vlogmas. We love you. Later taters. Bye. Now a big shout out to all of my dirty plant enthusiasts out there that are still hanging on. You guys are freaking awesome. Jay Lee, Stephanie Menzies, Casey Glidewell, Abby Gilbert, Hazel Foreman, Jessica Viola, Stephanie Bazella, Shay Bro. Melissa Hartog, Wesley Lamentino, Tiffany Wright, Perry Hope, Denver Homegirl, Amy Adwan, Fredo19, Louise H, Victoria Fonseca, Ann Collins, Isabel Woodruff, JS, The Plant Nook, Lulu's Leaves, Pups and Plants, David Sawyer, Mahoney McGrath, Mrs. McGrath, Bethany, Bethany Estes, Bougie Panda, Lola Isabel, Amanda Jensen, Ashley Sexton, Ari Stardust, Trent Grolmus, Ordinary Plant Girl, Showers ASMR, Birdigree Dreams, Gretchen Ward, Darren Hebel, Safia Bahadir, Nikki Smoda, Kimberly Mossman, Jill Cunningham, Finner Lamb, Jake Rowe, Christy Bem, Jenna Maria, House Planty Goodness, and Heather Summers. And now for an extra dirty, extra nasty shout out for my number one plant hose in my stable, my dirty plant hose. Andrew Wolf, Aaron Grant, The Plant Channel, Danny Ryan, KBS Greenhouse, Platitude Stern, Natural State Ashley, Karen Brackbill, Sammy Joe Ruby, Kate Christie, Thick Ginger, Victoria Olson, Bailey Branham, Will H, Alexandra Kennedy, Brianna Boswell, Jennifer Lee Johnson, Jessica M, Tim Burton, Jess Marvel, Hollis Good, Gab, Annie D, Spotted Oreo 10, Emma LaCroix, Krista William, Kristen Williams, Kelly Costello, Botanicaz LLC, Heather Worrell, Wicked Rick, <laughs> Wicked Witch, Roxy, Emily Cephalou, Nikki Grilly, Heather Lamb, Amy Baxter, Stacy Anderson, The Plants Meow, and Jedi KCC. You guys are the shit. You're all on my Christmas card list this month, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. We love you guys. Peace out. Later taters. Bye.